Hi everyone, greeting from Moscow. I'm very excited to be the keynote speaker of this experimental IoT village. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, it's quite li uh, l late here in Moscow. Everyone is sleeping now. And I'm broadcasting from our hackerspace called Neuron. You can see it on my background. It's the first uh, Russian hackerspace located in the very center of Moscow. Uh, five minutes walk from the Red Square and Kremlin and Mr. Putin. And if you are going to visit Moscow, I invite you all to here. You can find it simply by uh, Googling Moscow Hackspace. Uh, so today I will talk about my hardware project. It's called the Flipper Zero, as you probably know. Here it is. Here's how it looks like. Uh, it's on the remain. <clears throat> uh, Flipper is the open source uh, multi-tool device for pen testers, researchers, and uh, hardware hackers. It's uh, the Swiss army knife for uh, access control systems, radio protocols, and uh, so on. Uh, but it's not just a piece of hardware. It's, uh, it has a personality of a curious cyber dolphin. Uh, who enjoy hacking uh, all kind of uh, real physical systems around it. Here is how it looks like, you probably see. Uh, uh, Flipper's uh, character was inspired by Dolphin from the old cyberpunk uh, movie, uh, Johnny Mnemonic. He was a cybernetically enhanced dolphin who used it to its ultrasonic waves to hack stuff around and burn bad guys. Here is this, if you see the slides, uh, here it is, how it looks like. Uh, very excited. Uh, so what, what actually Flipper Zero is? Uh, before answering this question, I want to tell about how I came to this idea. And uh, last uh, few years, I was working on developing and pen testing uh, the physical access control system. Uh, here's uh, on the picture, you see the schematic of uh, my uh, one of my projects. It's a versatile dual access control system. Uh, that supports many types of RFID tags as identifiers, such as EMV bank cards, uh, like Apple Pay, Google Pay, and uh, Moscow Troika card at the same time on one uh, reader. So we don't need to issue and manage uh, our cards. User can choose whatever card he already owns. This system is implemented uh, in our hackerspace right now. And I'm, it's very handy and I'm very proud of it. It's controlled via Telegram Messenger chatbot from the web interface and very cool. If you be, will be in Moscow, came to see it. And uh, as a developer, by the way, sorry for, for Russian signs on this picture. Uh, as a developer and pen tester, you always have to build your own hardware tools. Uh, usually it's a naked PCB with some shields stuck on, stuck it on it and a bunch of wires and all of this mounted on the bread, breadboard. Uh, and it looks like, uh, like this. Usually you all know. And uh, here's the picture how I'm going to the bank. Uh, with the Proxmark to sniffing and pen testing some uh, bank terminals. The security is, <laughs> is mad about this. And here is the picture of the Hydra Bus NFC tool. Hydra Bus with the Hydra NFC shield on it, uh, taped on the power bank. <clears throat> uh, it's a pretty good tool for sniffing ISO 14443 uh, protocols. 
and it looks like a sandwich of PCB with antenna and I had to mount it uh, like this and tape around the power bank because it's uh, breaking apart and you can't put this device in your backpack can't put it in your pocket because it's all scratch it breaks uh, and this problem usually face it with uh, anyone face it when making their own tools uh, once i made a custom nfc reader uh, based on quite popular cheap uh, nxp uh, pn531 53532 uh, which is only exist in naked PCB and it had to be uh, robust enough to survive in my backpack. So I filled it with the epoxy resin. You can see it on the picture and here's the real, uh, this device uh, survived after so many years. It's completely waterproof and robust uh, epoxy resin. It's, it's looks some dirty, but it's very, very robust. Uh, <clears throat> this is my first attempt to make my own designed device with uh, third-party PCBs. Uh, also, I like to play uh, a Tamagotchi, the old school uh, toy from Japan. And uh, uh, I make some silly modification, implement uh, soldering uh, the uh, T5577 chip into the Tamagotchi that have uh, ability to communicate with other Tamagotchi on the 125 kilohertz protocol. So I made a Tamagotchi that opens my uh, doors. <laughs> it's very funny. And uh, Uh, once ago, I saw a Semi's cam car. You all probably know the Semi. It's a famous guy. I see the project called Open Sesam. Uh, Semi take a uh, kit toy. It's a pager, probably, I don't know. It's a very old toy uh, for kids to chat between uh, several of these devices on the very small um, radius. Uh, and uh, upload the custom firmware uh, to weaponize this device to open garage doors. He found a way to modify the firmware and upload it and make a, a well built tool in a real consumer product. Yeah. And when I saw this, I liked this idea so much because uh, I always use these dirty PCBs uh, that scratch my pockets, that every time breaks. And when I see it, I think it's so cool, so amazing. No need to uh, solder ink and use uh, the tape or so on. Uh, and when I'm playing with uh, modified Tamagotchi, uh, I feel the same. It's very very cool so after all uh, i saw the project called uh, pionagotchi it's uh, uh, it's like a tamagotchi but instead of food he eats uh, the wi-fi passwords and the uh, hashes uh, this device made it by uh, evil socket who also make a project called uh, I forget. Uh, it's like a mm, Metasploit framework for uh, network attacks. <clears throat> uh, so after all, after using all this device, I wanted to make a well-designed, pretty robust and fun, uh, robust device in uh, <clears throat> nice case that combine all necessary tools uh, for daily pen testing, for access uh, control system, radio protocols, and so on. Uh, so let's see what is actually Flipper Zero. Right now, I'm 
uh, taking the it's a, it's a prototypes one of the prototypes we built to test our features uh, it's already have a uh, well uh, <clears throat> manufactured uh, case but it's not a final look uh, you can see the drill it holes and it's a cnc made it uh, case and uh, take a look of features of flipper zero so first of all it's completely open source uh, you can modify uh, the firmware uh, upload whatever you want and modify it as you want flipper has a monochrome uh, display like an old school uh, uh, old school phones like a Siemens, Nokia, because this display is ultra low power, so we can put uh, Flipper in always on mode. You don't need to turn off and turn on like you always do with your uh, phones. It's always uh, on display. And uh, when we turn off the backlight, you can still see it on the screen. And it can work in this mode uh, almost a week probably i'm not sure about power consumption right now but it's quite long <clears throat> uh, here you can see the uh, some specifications uh, let's take a look at features first of all i want to make it uh, work with iot uh, sensors uh, garage doors uh, car locks doorbells and so, so many gadgets that work on uh, free non light sense uh, range, like uh, 433 megahertz and uh, several different, like uh, 8068 megahertz in the different countries. So, we put in Flipper uh, the CC1101 chip that can both transmit and receive. Uh, any kind of uh, digital uh, modulated signals. So Flipper can work with the with all this stuff. It's a customizable platform. Uh, you can use whatever modulation you need, like uh, FSK, ASK, and OOK. Uh, but the problem is uh, the antenna that is tuned to one specific uh, range, but we try to work in to make it work on the wide range of frequencies <clears throat> to suitable in any country. Uh, so Flipper can analyze uh, the pro radio protocols such as key lock. Uh, they can sniff it and then uh, print in, print on the screen the uh, parsed protocols. So you can, uh, if you find uh, the n unknown um, key fob, you can just press uh, on on the button and see what frequency, when what protocol it works. Uh, also, Flipper have a um, <clears throat> 125 kilohertz RFID uh, tech support. Uh, they can read. Uh, so you can lay in uh, the cart and read the ID. You can save it in the memory. And then you can easily the emulate uh, this card from the memory. So you can save unlimited uh, list of different text cards from your office, from your home, and emulate it anytime. You even can uh, enter it manually. So you can ask your friend of the ID of his card, enter it uh, on the flipper, and emulate card, so you don't need even a physical card. Uh, it's a quite uh, difficult part because there are a lot of uh, protocols on this frequency, like a heat prox EM4100, uh, uh, and so on. Uh, they use a different modulation types. But we working on it now. Right now, Flipper can uh, only read and emulate EM4100 uh, protocols. So here, how it looks like. Uh, Flipper also have the infrared, old school infrared 
transceiver so you can uh, control your TV, your air conditioner to turn off any TV that annoying in the bar or something. Uh, you can also learn the new type of remotes just by put it on the flipper and entering in learn learning feature and save in memory some keys on your remote. Uh, flipper also compatible with platform IO. Uh, if you know, it's a extension for the Microsoft Visual Studio code. So you can write your own code and upload it into Flipper. Uh, not like uh, regular Arduino boards when you upload the only one firmware at the moment. So every time you need a different feature, you need to re-upload it, uh, refresh, refresh it completely. In Flipper, you can upload uh, your code as a plugins. So you can go to plugin menu and choose whatever uh, code you upload. So no, no need to refresh every time you need a different program. So you can extend, extend it with your own plugins. Uh, <clears throat> Flipper also have, if you see this, uh, GPIO holes. I don't know if you see it or not. Here it is. It's a GPIO holes, so you can put your PLS uh, wires in it and connect it to the different hardware, like uh, flashing your Wi-Fi router connected to some uh, industrial devices via SPI, UART, I square C. Etc., and uh, use it as a bridge via USB to any kind of uh, industrial protocols. <clears throat> and instead of uh, Arduino or Raspberry Pi board, the flipper is completely autonomous. So it have uh, its own here it is its own uh, three and three and five volts power. So you can power devices from the flipper. Uh, you can use the API of uh, the display buttons and vibration motor and uh, piezo speaker to control it from your own programs. Uh, and you can see the debug message on the screen while you connect it to the, some, some devices. You don't even need the PC for this. Uh, Flipper based on the STM32 uh, chip. It's very popular. And uh, this chip is quite powerful, so you can implement on it uh, the custom USB stack to use it as, as a bad USB device. Uh, you probably know the USB rubber ducky, and there is many tools like this. So you can simulate on the Flipper, uh, the heat device, like a keyboard to enter the custom payload uh, on the PC. So when you connect it to the PC, they uh, connect it as the keyboard and type whatever you want. And such as Flipper have, since Flipper have uh, the display, you can choose whatever payload you want. You don't need to just hardware, uh, hardware uh, switches like on rubber ducky, you can choose from the big library of payloads. It can be the Ethernet uh, adapter with the poisonous uh, evil DNS, or it can be a keyboard or serial, serial port. No matter. And it also have the I button. I don't know uh, if other rest of the world know what is I button, but I button it's a uh, contact keys like this, very popular here in Russia and uh, in Belarus and probably some Asian country, I don't know about the USA. Uh, it's contacted keys, uh, work it on y -Y one wire protocol. Uh, and Flipper has a, uh, 
I don't know how to extend it. Yeah, we have a custom built uh, iButton connector uh, because the flipper can both uh, be as, as a reader and as an emulator of the one wire key. So you can emulate this, uh, read this key, save it, uh, and then emulate on the real, uh, real door. <clears throat> The flipper, uh, I can. I want to talk about how we start development on flipper. First of all, I will. I think about the shield for the Raspberry Pi Zero as a peer on a gochi. But uh, since since we start developing, we face it with some difficulties because the Raspberry Pi is quite old platform, and uh, it not have enough. Um, it's very power hungry, not have enough uh, <clears throat> options like uh, sleep mode. And uh, after after all this uh, failure with Raspberry Pi Zero, we think about uh, developing our board from scratch. This project uh, was uh, separate from the Flipper Zero into Flipper One. This is under hardly development project. Right now, it's not even the prototype part uh, here it is it's a completely linux based computer like uh, or raspberry pi orange pi and so on based on I nxp imx6 processor uh, ulz series uh, this is a very very low power device uh, low power processor uh, that is even don't have a graphical core uh, <clears throat> so it's much more effective in power than a Raspberry Pi. And uh, it will work on the Kali Linux, uh, write it directly on the SD card. <clears throat> uh, because the Flipper, Flipper Zero is only based on the STM uh, microcontroller, you can boot it with the Linux. Now so the Flipper One is the most more advanced device than a Flipper Zero. It will have all features from the Flipper Zero with power of the Linux, the same bad USB mode. Uh, the one feature of the Raspberry Pi, uh, why we dropped the Raspberry Pi support, because the quite old and buggy Wi-Fi chipset. <clears throat> because it works only on uh, 2.4 gigahertz, and don't support the modern 5G network. 5G network that spreading the coronavirus. So we can't spread the COVID uh, virus with the only 2.4 gigahertz. So we need the 5G. Uh, and uh, we start looking at uh, modern chipset for the Wi-Fi hacking. This is a quite difficult topic because there is no modern chipset that support both the packet injection and the monitor mode. Uh, so we're now researching and I invite everyone who know the good chip that work over the SDIO, not over the USB interface, because for embedded devices, we need the, uh, we need the SDIO because of low power, <clears throat> and much better support on the processor. So I invite you to go to the, our forum and suggest your uh, variants of good Wi-Fi chipset that support, support all hacking features. And also Flipper One will support the NFC that is not supported by the Flipper Zero. Uh, NFC is uh, another big topic because we want to make it completely um, uh, emulate completely uh, complete cards with the UID and so on. And a uh, lot of chips on the market don't support this with the LibNFC and so on. So we are looking for the best NFC chipset and you can suggest your variants. 
on the forum. And probably my time is over. Am I right? Or no? Hey. Yeah. So if you want to talk about want to talk more about Flipper, you can go to Discord. I will answer to any of your questions. Uh, thank you. Ah, uh, we are planning to start on the Kickstarter in the few weeks, probably when we finish the, our paperwork and the legal part and the company bank accounts and so on. And we start the Kickstarter company. So enjoy and join to us. We think about IoT Village as a movement. These devices are being adopted so rapidly that security is not effectively being baked into the development and deployment of those solutions. That puts consumers at risk, that puts businesses at risk, that puts governments at risk. And what we're trying to do is to galvanize a community around solving that problem. Every time somebody hears IoT, they immediately think, I don't want this in my house. But as time goes by, that choice of having something in your house or not is not really there. You can walk in the village, you won't feel like you're asking a dumb question, and you'll still walk away learning something, no matter what your skill level is or knowledge. IoT Village provides an opportunity for people to experience security in a very tangible, very real way. So what ends up happening is, I can kill Lisa right now. She's being <laughs> smothered. She's flatlining, patient monitor's going nuts, she's dead. What's going on at the nurse's station? She's fine. What I'm doing right now is we are replaying recorded data of a healthy patient. So this patient monitor is something you'd see in every hospital room in America probably. The IoT Village seeks to raise awareness of IoT security. We want consumers to be able to make informed decisions and we want manufacturers to improve their security. So we put a lot of work into the security on the Bird 2 and we wanted to put it in front of the DEF CON community and see what people were able to do with it. We've learned stuff about our tech that we didn't previously know and from my perspective that's phenomenal because we have a really talented team internally but when we can be educated by people external to the company it's a big, big win. We really want to show that uh, we very much welcome the work that uh, security researchers do. And uh, even though we work in a world, the medical device world, that's not as accessible to uh, the people that work in this space, we really value the input that uh, researchers have. We want to show that we, uh, we love for them to work with us on uh, our medical devices and uh, what they can find in it. Security is a mission critical part of being a pioneer. And by participating in this, they're able to address some of the challenges that are introduced through innovation. Building a contest to challenge hackers, you know, at the world's biggest hacker conference, if these guys didn't know what they were doing, this room would be empty. So IoT Village is awesome. Unfortunately, like a lot of hackers work in these uh, small groups. They don't really share a lot of information because they kind of want to monetize or capitalize off of the information that they have. So being here in IoT Village gives us an opportunity to talk to a bunch of other hackers that we wouldn't normally talk to and share information and kind of like come together as one. I think it is the best thing since sliced bread, personally. This year we're here at DEF CON helping run a uh, hands-on lab, IoT Hacking 101. How do we get people involved with this? Because it might be intimidating, right? Walking up into a big CTF at a big conference. The idea is that we handhold them all the way through from the basics of firmware analysis right through to discovering a bug and popping a device or two. I just connected over NetCat. There was nothing fancy, no authentication, anything like that. And this number here is your authentication token. It's a serial number on the device. That's what they're using for authentication. So what we're doing is that we're showing people how we find vulnerabilities in embedded devices. Specifically, I've been targeting NAS devices, and I've been showing how we find vulnerabilities, develop an exploit for it, and exploit it from the attacker's perspective. IoT Village is the face of IoT security worldwide. 
they're probably the most preeminent brand when it comes to dealing with IoT security. We have expertise, they have expertise, and we feel that it's more than just a sponsorship, it's more of a partnership in which we share stuff with each other. The visibility that you get from all of these conferences is, a, is an amazing thing. It's only going to get more and more relevant, and the devices are only going to get more and more prevalent. And so I think it's just a great interactive, hands-on experience for people to come and get immersed. We know that these security challenges that are inherent within connected devices, they're not going away on their own. We're able to make these challenges come alive, to become real, to be tangible. And when we do that, we enable people to participate in being part of the solution.